Hey everybody, Ronaldo Wofferman here with Grand VJ Video Tutorials. Today I want to talk to you about a couple new features in Grand VJ 273. However, this video alone will focus on NDI. Now, if you don't know what NDI is, I definitely recommend you check out some of my Media Master tutorials as I've done some videos talking about it. But long story short, NDI is an improvement over Siphon and Spout. Siphon is for Mac, Spout is for PC, but allows you to take the output of a compatible app and feed it as an input. So for example, Virtual DJ has Siphon, which would allow me to go out from Virtual DJ or if you're a Serato user, Mix Emergency, and feed it natively into Grand VJ. The problem is that a lot of the apps that we need to use in a real environment is not going to work. For example, PowerPoint still, or even Keynote, still have not implemented Spout or Siphon. It's also platform specific. Trying to do it over IP is more trouble than it's really worth. So here comes NDI, it's a technology from New Tech that allows you to take a theoretical and endless number of video streams and send it over IP with very low latency. You've got two forms of NDI. You've got your traditional NDI and NDI HX. NDI HX is mostly used for PTZ cameras that allow you to take that same video source and it's compressed. You can't tell that it's compressed, but it does prevent a network bog down for multiple cameras being used. Remember that because we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So where does Grand VJ and NDI come in? Well, let's talk about the NDI inputs because this not only now allows Grand VJ to become a real or to be a real powerful DJ and club tool, but now it becomes a powerful tool for corporate work and even some broadcast work. And I'll show you about that in just a minute. So first, let's talk about the inputs. I'm actually going to go ahead and fire up my iPhone here. So let's split the screen in half. And there is my iPhone. Now there's two versions of the cameras. There's one app that's called Epoch Camera. I prefer that one over the NDI HX, which you're going to see here in just a second. There's a free Epoch and a full version. The full version gives you full resolution out of your phone. You can use uh, audio and a few other features. The NDI HX camera already has those features, but it's free. Why do I prefer Epoch? Because it's not NDI HX. The reason I don't like NDI HX is because my phone is now not only streaming, but it's also doing the compressing. It gets really hot really fast. Uh, so don't have your case on if you're going to use the NDI HX. It's not going to be burning hot, but you know how Apple products can be. Let's go ahead and fire that up over here. And you can see over here that it's already brought up. I can switch the cameras if I need to. So I'm actually going to go ahead and flip the camera here so you can see my pretty face. And now you'll also see on the NDI inputs that my phone pops up. So let's bring that in. Okay, so you can see that there is very little delay. I do have the phone and this uh, app capture synced perfectly as far as... If any latency that you see here, it's exactly how it looks in real person. I didn't doctor anything up to make it look better or worse than it is. But you can see that even though there's a little bit of latency, you know, it, it looks pretty darn good, especially considering that it's on wireless. Now, if I flip it around, pretty smooth. It is a little jumpy right now because I've got a whole bunch of devices on this network. But put it on an isolated network without, you know, 40 computers connected to it. And it's just phenomenal. But NDI is a lot more useful than just for phone streams. So for example, on the other room, I have my wife's MacBook and we're running an app called Scan Converter. Now this is a Mac only thing. There is kind of sort of Windows version. It's a free uh, app with the NDI tools. What Scan Converter allows you to do is it allows you to grab an app. In this case, I grab the output from Jamtex and I'm wirelessly sending it to my Grand VJ. It doesn't have to be wireless, it can also be wired through a Cat6 cable, of course. But the cool thing about it is that, again, on any Mac, it'll grab the app even if it's minimized. So right now, that app is minimized. She might be checking her email or getting some work done, but this is running in the background. With Windows, it doesn't work like that. Windows, it just captures a portion of the screen. So you have to have the app up at all times. But again, still pretty cool considering what you're able to do with it. It is cross-platform. So somebody could have a Mac computer and you could send this to your Arkea server, which runs on Windows. So that's another great thing about the overall NDI input. But what about NDI output? Let's say you are running a church and you want to stream out to OBS and you're using Grand VJ. We're going to go to make a new OBS screen here. We're just going to call it uh, 
just grand VJ, super simple. We're gonna go into our plus and we are going to grab our NDI source here. We're gonna just call this grand VJ. Oh, it's already taken because <laughs> there. Grand VJ NDI. And the source name is going to be right here, the Grand VJ output. Click OK. There we are right there. So the beautiful thing about it is that now I can literally stream out from my Grand VJ directly into OBS. This allows Grand VJ to become a live broadcast tool. Now one really cool thing about NDI is that it doesn't do just video. It can also do audio as well. So for example, with OBS, if I'm streaming directly from my phone to OBS, I can also transfer the audio from my phone, which is pretty cool. Grand VJ is currently video only. So for example, here's a video I just quickly dragged and dropped in between cuts here. Now in, uh, day 20, 30, 40, I have no idea. And you can see that it did not transfer it over. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now one of the easy ways of doing that in OBS is just by going into a video capture. So for example, this is my audio input capture. And here's my AG06. If I just transition there, check, check, one, two. Personally, I prefer that way. I don't want to use Grand VJ as my audio mixer. I'd rather have a separate hardware audio mixer and then feed that in as a USB source into OBS Studio. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, understanding about how NDI interfaces directly into Grand VJ. So with all the options Grand VJ offers, which you're talking your ClingNet, ArtNet, NDI in, NDI out, uh, MIDI, OSC, and of course, Track VJ and Ableton Link, which we'll talk about that later on. Grand VJ has become an incredibly powerful tool. So you know the deal. If you have any questions, comments, etc., leave them down in the section below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. While I'm filming this, we're all still on, under lockdown from COVID. So be safe. Good night and God bless. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Gear it first, honest reviews, incredible gig logs, lots of tips and tricks, and more tutorials than any other YouTube channel. I guarantee it or your money back.